गुड इवनिंग माय डियर स्टूडेंट्स गुड इवनिंग मानसी सो टुडे विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट अ न्यू टॉपिक कॉल्ड एज पॉलीमर्स गुड इवनिंग विनायक सुरम सो इन द लास्ट क्लास वी डिस्कस अबाउट व्हाट वी कॉल्ड एज द विटामिन्स एंड द बायो मॉलिक्यूल्स लास्ट पार्ट कॉल्ड एज न्यूक्लिक एसिड्स सो जस्ट to go back to today's class so the topic name is introduction to polymers i think you know that polymers are very very important so why we are discussing after your uh, biomolecules is if you know that the biomolecules are also a large joint molecules so they are also called as the polymers especially the enzymes the proteins and the what we called as uh, your aliphatic uh, uh, acids which we called as the uh, fats as well as the oils so they are also huge uh, macromolecular substances so that's reason first we discussed about uh, what we called as the biomolecules then we are discussing about this uh, polymers so that you can understand in a better way so actually those uh, biomolecules has been originated with the help of this polymerization process especially when i talk about peptides you all of you know that the big the large number of proteins which are basically obtained with respect to uh, your monomers like amino acids joined together to form a large macromolecules that is what enzymes okay so let us uh, look into the previous uh, session what we discussed about uh, that is what uh, vitamins different types and sources their deficiencies we discussed then the functions of vitamins in the bio system as i said if the protein has to work in a effective and 100% benefit given to the biological system only when the cofactor like vitamins exist so they support the activity that means they act as a promoter to make this activity 100% of the protein so that's what we discussed in the vitamin part okay so then then we discussed about the genetic aspects of uh, biomolecules that's what uh, we discussed about the nucleic acids the type of nucleic acids like dna rna and their biological functions so which we have discussed in the last class so after this class i gave a cpp the class practice session where uh, majority of the students uh, have gone with this question as a wrong answers okay so let us discuss what is that uh, question and where you went wrong so if you look at the question that uh, what you have asked the sequence in the structure of nucleic acid is so it is very simple question i think you have studied in biology also i don't know why you people choose the answer as c majority of the student choose answer as c but answer is d look at this uh, when we are going for a dna ana- analysis the first and foremost thing is the phosphodiesterase bond that's where the phosphate group you look at over that comes out then the pentose sugar get hydrolyzed then your base so that means when you look from the there should be an uh, adenine guanine or what we call as a purine and pyrimidine bases should be there those bases will be linked to the pentoses then pent- pentose will be linked to your phosphate okay so like that so this is the combination of the sequence which always goes thereby your answer should be okay the phosphate pentose and the base the next today we'll be talking about the goals for the day where i will be talking about today's class that is introduction to polymers classification of polymers addition polymerization so where we will be talking about two types of polymerization free radical polymerization process as well as ionic polymerization cationic and anionic polymerization these are the two process the latest technique where we find uh, better effective polymerization process when compared to the free radical polymerization process so let us discuss what is this uh, polymers i think uh, you all of you know that the polymers are high molecular substances which are obtained from a simple monomers okay so that's what poly as the name itself says poly means many mers means units when i talk about polymers that means we have many units joined together with a covalent bond to form a large macromolecular substance so that is what we called as the polymers polymers are a large chain molecular weight compounds which are obtained from a simple monomer units okay so through a covalent bonded compound so because the covalent bond means you all of you know that when there is electronegativity remains same so then the sharing of electron takes place so that is what the carbon which exhibits this property in major then it is exhibits the property called as catenation so thereby the majority of the polymers which we obtain is covalent compounds so that means high molecular substances containing a large number of monomer units so those are all called as the polymers now coming to this monomer so these monomers are very simple 
yes i think uh, the disosa is asking something about uh, uh, give me the polymer list uh, and their monomers need to be studied definitely because today i will be talking about introduction to polymers so definitely i will be talking about what are the polymers you have to study what is their monomers and what is their properties and where they are used definitely i will uh, discuss about all those things so give me some time i will explain those things also okay disosa so coming to this monomers when you look at this monomers they have to have special properties okay so what is that suppose if i take a methane as i said so it contains hydrogen 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 can it can act as a monomer the question comes so now if i take a compound like this ch2 double bond ch2 now we have to be very careful here when we are talking about a saturated hydrocarbon this cannot act as a monomer okay uh, when we talk about any functional group including your double bond or a triple bond or any other functional group like alcohol aldehyde ketone carboxylic acid okay amine peptide bond okay anything if you find a bonding or a functional group then those components are taken to be the monomers because in order to form a linkage there should be a active site for binding so the monomers are the simple com organic compounds which possess a lone pair of electron or a functional group so that it can form a covalent bond with another monomer such compounds are called as monomers so vinayak uh, suram is asking uh, you want definition of uh, polymers yes these are i molecular weight substances consisting of large number of monomer units which are linked to each other through covalent bond such compounds are called as the polymers because they are obtained in a larger quantity and the size can be easily seen hence they are called as macro molecules also the polymers are also called as macro molecules because of high molecular weight i think uh, vinayak you got the answer for the your question okay so now coming to this polymerization so now remember the monomer is a simple organic compound which should possess a functional group or a lone pair of electron which can involve in bonding that is especially the covalent bond formation where the catenation helps in making large number of unit okay so coming to the polymerization polymerization is a process where the simple monomers are brought together that process is called as the polymerization usually the polymerization occurs with the help of free radical mechanism or nowadays we can make that through ionic reaction cationic based or anionic based reaction which we can use and we can bring about the polymerization process the phenomena through which the monomers are linked together is called as the polymerization process so let us look at uh, what we call as uh, the classification of polymers it is a huge today we call this polymer as the 21st century metal because without this polymer nobody will survive such a complex and uh, what we called as we are addicted to this polymers that's why we call this as 21st century metal so whatever we think we look for the plastic or the what we call as the polymer substance now look at the classification that's the reason it is classified based on so many uh, reasons and so many uh, methods the first method goes for the polymerization uh, what do you call sorry polymers uh, classification is the sources the second based on the monomer type of monomers which we are using that is the nature the third is based on the structure how they are formed and how they are obtained that is where we are look at the structure then how they are stabilized and how they are uh, exist in the nature with what kind of forces so that's where we talk about based on the forces we are going to classify these polymers next is based on synthesis so how you are going to obtain these polymers what is the chemical reactions involved so based on that we are going to classify that means there are five ways of classifying your polymers the first method that is what the source which goes so remember here natural polymers synthetic polymer and so sometimes the natural polymer does not give 100% the required properties even synthetic properties uh, uh, synthetic polymers also cannot give 100% what we required properties when we are using for application thereby what we are going to do is that is called as semi synthetic polymers that means the best example i can give you is rubber the rubber which gets from the natural source that is a rubber plant it is having aging problem that means it absorbs moisture and it gets easily spoiled and it cannot be used at higher temperature but if i use the synthetic rubber that is called as butadiene which is uh, synthetically obtained if i use it that is very hard 
once again and when the temperature goes down it becomes soft. So, thereby we have a glass transition temperature which talks about that property. Now, I want a rubber in such a way that it should withstand cold temperature as well as your higher temperature thereby what we do we take the one that is comma 1 comma 3 butadiene that is 2 methyl 1 comma 3 butadiene which is a natural rubber where we are adding sulfur to that and we do a process called as vulcanization thereby the required property of the rubber is obtained that means I am using one part of the natural and one is the elemental part synthetic thereby I am going to get the required property for that rubber. So, that is why that kind of polymers are called as semi synthetic that means we are using both natural as well as synthetic that polymer is called as semi synthetic polymers. Then based on the linear chain, branch chain, cross linked polymers anyhow I will be talking about individual process how we obtain. Then based on the forces if you look at so elastomers which is called as a rubber especially the fibers which we call it as a air and your cotton all those things comes under the category of fibers and we have plastic that is homoplastic, thermoplastic, thermosetate plastics. So, those comes under the category of the forces. Then coming to the monomers we have the polymers where a similar type of monomers involves and when we go for copolymer different types of monomers involves. So, apart from that we have the synthesis method that means, so synthetic polymers can be or natural polymers can be obtained only by the two process that is where we called as addition polymerization that is called as chain polymerization and condensation which we called as step growth polymerization. These are the two methods basically which we use for obtaining the polymers. So, let us discuss what all the natural polymers and how actually they are obtained. The natural polymers as the name itself indicates they are exist in the nature, exist in nature by themselves that means this is prepared by the plants ok. So, that is where so we call them as the natural polymer the polymer which exist in nature by themselves. So, those are called as the natural polymer example the starch ok then we have cellulose then we have milk ok then uh, in milk I am talking about what we call as the casein which is a protein that will be there then silk ok wool anything you talk n number things that will go for the natural polymers. So, coming to the next part where we called as a synthetic polymers that is where the fiber which we use is the nylon. So, look at here the nylon 6 and nylon 6 6 which we get are a decron so, carpolactam is used in the process they are all synthetic chemicals they are not natural chemicals. So, that is why those polymers which are called as synthetic polymers the chemicals which we use for synthesizing a polymers which are man made those are called as synthetic polymers ok. Example nylon in that we have 6 and nylon 6 6 then we have dacron ok and terline ok so, n number of examples PVC we can give ok. So, n number of components which are obtained today by using what we called as the chemicals or what we call as synthetic chemicals that polymers are called as synthetic polymers. Coming to semi synthetic polymer that already I explained where we are going to use 2 methyl 1 comma 3 butadiene. So, this is the natural rubber for this we are going to add sulfur. So, thereby what happens? So, this is the natural one this is uh, sulfur is uh, synthetic. So, thereby when we get the polymer which is vulcanized rubber. So, which comes under the category of what we called as semi synthetic polymers ok. The next is based on structure. So, when we look for the structure where we find a linear polymer next we are going to talk about the branched polymers then complex structure that means network polymers we call it as the third type. So, when we talk about linear polymer here a similar type of monomers will run parallel to each other the chain of polymerization occurs a linear to each other such polymers are called as linear polymers in this case except van der Waals force or cohesive force no other force attracts between the layers of polymers. So, that type of polymers are called as linear polymer especially when we talk about high density polyethylene ok that is PVC that is your what we call as a polyvinyl chloride or what we call as ethylene 
these are all comes under linear polymers. So, when we think of uh, what we called as the branched polymers, okay, so there you can find the layers between these polymers will be having some kind of bonds between the first layer and the second layer that is what when I write a chemical general formula of polymerization reaction you will understand what is that. That what I will represent here suppose I have a monomer. So, that I am using as n numbers when I go with the free radical mechanism that is where we write the free radicals and upon eating with pressure, pressure so that will convert into chain of polymers like this these monomers will join together it forms n chains that means n number of monomer unit join together to form m chains. So, that means it, I am showing you one chain here Avogadro number means you can think of n layers will be there in the case of linear we find only the straight line without uh, what we call as linking between the first chain with the second chain except Van der Waals force. When it comes to the branched one there you can find a covalent bond exists between the first layer of thing with the second layer of polymerization. Okay. So, this is where we talk about glycogen, insulin, okay, those polymers which will be given as example for this. Okay. Uh, Akshay is asking something, yes sir, please clarify how we will teach us coordination compounds. Uh, why this coordination compounds is coming in polymerization reaction, I am not able to understand. Okay. Coordination compounds basically goes with the d block elements. Uh, where we think of ca carbon complexes uh, where it is called as organometallic compound where a metal is having a direct linkage with your carbon that is a iron carbonyl compounds so, that is totally different topic uh, I am talking about right now with your polymers. So, do you have any doubts with the polymers I can just classify or if you have any specific doubt with the coordination compound I can answer your question uh, there is no problem for that actually can you specify what is your question because you are asking. So, please clarify who will teach us the coordination compounds. So, that is very difficult for me to tell right now because I am talking about the organic chemistry of polymers. Okay, if you have any doubt I can answer your coordination compound also if you have specific question. Okay, the next the last part uh, of uh, linear cla this classification based on structure it goes with the cross linked or network structure which we talk about. Okay. When we think of this, this will go for network or what we call as cross link that means the each line when you think of your okay, get massive interconnections like this. The layer does not follow in one way they will get massive interconnections that is why this is called as highly branched cross linked or network polymerization. So, here what happens not only your covalent bond there will be a cohesive forces covalent bond hydrogen bonding. So, all type of bonds which gets involved here thereby. So, this once it breaks we cannot rejoin them that is where the network polymers or what we call as COPA what we call as uh, the highly branched polymers cannot be obtained or uh, sorry what we call as we cannot uh, rejoin them together with a proper connectivity. So, this breaks means they are completely broken down that means we call them as thermosetted plastics example your switchboard your mobile phones once they break you cannot join them because they are highly cross linked network even your nail if you cut once again you cannot put it back because it is highly cross linked natural polymer where we cannot find out which point has broken and where I am going to join back it is very 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 difficult. So, that is where this cross linked highly branched they are very hard and they are very brittle in nature. So, the cross linked or network polymer processes. So, the next uh, when we think of uh, differences between linear and cross link this is what is very important you have to know the differences because most of the objective questions will be asked on that part. So, now when we think of uh, linear polymer here and uh, here I will be talking about uh, cross linked polymers. See here as the name definition you write it down first they are arranged with linear chain except a Van der Waals force of attraction between the chains there is no force of attraction. Here when it comes to the cross link here we have the sulphide linkages the hydrogen bonding exist between them. So, that is the first difference. So, here linear chain here there is a interconnection between the chains occur. These when we talk about linear they are soluble in nature because 
uh, the macromolecules which we obtain they do not have interconnection between the layers thereby they are easily soluble. When it goes to the cross linked polymer they are insoluble in your solvents especially when we talk about uh, polar solvent. So, then you have to make use of inorganic solvent uh, what we call as a inorganic solvent is nothing but your water it is not going to dissolve. So, then what you have to make use? So, you have to make use of non polar solvents which comes under the category of your organic solvent like uh, toluene, acetone, alcohol, benzene, xylene. So, those any of non polar solvent if you use you can dissolve them that is the reason do not try to clean your mobile screen by using acetone because it will become melted. So, because your mobile is uh, what we think of the plastic which thermosetted and your acetone is purely non polar component immediately it interacts and your hand can even stick to that ok. So, that where so that is what it happens next this linear polymer on eating it becomes soft whereas, this eating of cross linked polymer just decomposes ok. They are very reactive this cross linked chemically in order because of their uh, in order nature because of there is no free binding sites available on the chain. So, next uh, classification is based on the mode of polymerization. So, that is where we talk about homo polymers. So, homo polymers means if you look at this reaction where I have written ethylene as the monomer where I have taken n numbers that means that is what talks about the degrees of polymerization where n number of ethylene when you taken and if it is given with the free radical without free radicals no polymerization takes place. The free radicals are subject to the process upon eating you are going to get n chains of polyethylene. If you look at here the only thing is the similar type of monomers are joined together hence this type of polymer is called as homo polymerization process. Okay, next is the copolymers. The copolymers are those in which you are going to use two different types of monomer. So, if you look at O here I am having a butadiene here that is what one uh, natural rubber. So, then we have a styrene over here. So, that means benzene with uh, uh, ethylene when we join together you are going to get. So, the one more rubber which is called as butastyrene rubber. Okay. So, this is the copolymerized rubber where we have two different types of monomer. Okay. So, such type of polymers are called as copolymer or this is also called as the block polymers because we are going to use different different block of monomers at different intervals time and we can get the desired property for that particular material. So, the next classification is based on how we obtain that is where addition reaction addition polymerization process. These polymers are found just by the addition of monomer with a direct contact with the carbon to carbon. Okay. So, that is where the catenation comes, but in this process whenever a monomer is added to another monomer there is no elimination of by product takes place. Hence, this, pro this polymer is called as addition polymerization. So, and this will always results in the what we called as the what is uh, inductive effect where the molecules will shifting electron from double bond to single bond. So, that is where this if you look at carefully here the propylene which I have taken as a n number ok upon free radical treatment and temperature you can see here the double bondage which is present was in the propylene as get converted into a single bond that involves in what we call as inductive effect where the transfer of or delocalization of the unpaired electron which is present in the double bond will move towards uh, what we call as single bond that means, so that will get converted into polymerization process. I think when I explain the free radical mechanism initiation propagation termination you will understand how actually that process occurs. So, coming to the next process is called as a condensation polymerization as the name itself indicates there is going to condense something. What is that condenses a simple molecules like water HCl ammonia. So, these molecules will come out from the two monomers that is the copolymerization takes place that means, two different functional groups if they join together. That is what if you look at the example which I mentioned over here that is nylon 6 6. So, when you think over here it contains hexamethyl diamine which contains two NH 2 groups on either side of your uh, uh, what is hexaethyl group and adipic acid where you are finding the carboxylic group that is dicarboxylic acid. So, the H which is present in the amine and COOH which contains OH. So, that will form 
the water H plus and OH minus will give you water. So, thereby in this molecule you can find the water molecule gets condenses out and you are going to find a special type of bond which as discussed in the case of protein similar to that there is a amide bond is going to be formed CONH bond. So, this is called as polyamides nylon 6 is is going to exist because of polyamides. I hope you got understood here. So, here in this case we are going to eliminate water molecule. Similarly, it depends upon the what monomer which is having a functional group based on that either water or HCl or ammonia can be eliminated during condensation process. The next is the special type of polymers which purely works based on the molecular forces which involved in stabilizing that molecule that is where we call it as elastomers. So, elastomers are naturally called as rubbers. Okay, this is the technical term which we use the elastomers. So, when you look at elastomers, they are called as super coiled structures. It is not like even fibers. When we talk about the elastomers, they are super coiled like this. So, when you look at here, when I apply a force to this, okay, the force is equal to W x that is the work is done over here. So, that is pulls back that is the negative sign shows that means it is works based on Hooke's law. So, when I apply a force to this at the molecular level it expands at least minimum 10 percent the original length of the molecule. So, that means, so after removing the force that molecule regains its original shape that kind of substances are called as elastomers. Elastomers are substances or the polymeric substances upon application of force they expand minimum 5 to 10 percent then the original length and after removing the force they regain back their original position. So, that is due to the cohesive forces which occurs in the super coiled structure of this elastomeric substances. Okay. So, that example your rubber. So, any rubber which comes under the category of elastomers. Okay. So, next is we talk about the fibers. The basic difference between the fibers and the elastomers is where in the case of fibers it is a super coiled structures whereas, in the case of fiber always it is a linear structure. So, here as I already said they do not have any interlinking between the two nature or that is two chains thereby what happens they cannot get coiled. So, if you try to apply a force the bond length increases according to F is equal to so okay, that is m 1 m 2 by d square that is inverse square law. So, what happens the distance increases thereby the bond breaks. So, hence the fiber will get broken very easily on application of force whereas, in the case of elastomer that is not the scenario because of the super coiling nature they will get back to original state. Okay. So, that is the major difference between the fiber and elastomer. The next is the thermoplastics. So, these are the plastics uh, which can be remolded n number of times by the application of temperature and pressure. So, that means the rack pickers they pick the uh, old plastic and they remold it that is what if you look at the polymer association is already uh, mentioned whenever we use a plastic we have to look for a number which is available below the bottle uh, base. So, that is where so if you see that number in a triangle shaped thing so that says 3 times means what the 3 number indicates is this plastic has been recycled 3 times that means what we have done we are apply, we are taken off those plastics which is available in the okay as a waste and that is recycled 3 times. So, that means it is losing their property that means at any time it can make contaminate that is the reason the plastic which we have to use should not contain this number. So, that means that is the first number which is not recycled plastic. So, that you have to be very very careful because the moment you go for recycling. So, we do not know which method they are doing and what method if you store the foodstuffs in those substances once again they will create a large problem for biological system. But the thermoplastics are those plastics which are useful actually because we can recycle and we can reuse and we have to reduce the usage of plastic also that is what you have to remember because we have another type of plastic where we talk about thermosetted plastics these are called as e waste plastic which you cannot remold by application of whatever the temperature and pressure because they have highly cross linked network whenever we try to remold them they decompose. So, that is why this e waste which we are talking about today is all because of this thermosetted plastic especially the bakelites, switches, CDs, DVDs which we use 
all plastic items which comes under the what we call as thermosetted plastics are bio non biodegradable substances they cause very damage very much damage to the environmental system the next is the differences if you look at uh, what is the basic differences between they are formed by the addition polymerization so these are formed by condensation that means the water elimination or ammonia elimination is taken place that means you cannot uh, remold them because whatever the process you do here there is a chemical transformation has completely occurred for the process coming the, to the second point they are linear chains as i said three dimensionally they have a cross work cross network bonding that is why it is very difficult to join back them or remold them they saw melt soft and on heating and again cooling you can do n number of process for that but this cannot be done with the same condition they decompose so next is uh, they are less brittle and soluble in organic solvents they are more brittle and insoluble in organic solvent that is what i said the polymers can live more than your lifetime so that is what the difficulty once we use start using this plastic they will only use us someday later by taking our lives the next is the based on the method of preparation we talk about addition polymerization or this is called as chain growth polymerization because every moment uh, whenever the polymerization takes place each time a monomer get added to the process that is why this is called as addition polymerization or chain growth because the first step one monomer get added to the another monomer in the second step this product will get added with one more so thereby every step so there is a formation of chain takes place so this that is why this is called as chain growth polymerization so this is basically just addition of simple monomer units of same type takes place so when it comes to the free radical mechanism of this addition polymerization let me take a simple example so whenever we talk about the free radical mechanism you all of you know that this occurs in three steps the first step is called as the initiation next is the propagation and the third one is called as chain termination So, these are the basic three steps which involves in any of free radical mechanism. So, now when I talk about initiation, how it is initiated? It is always initiated with the help of a free radical generator. That is what I can use sodium persulfate, I can use benzyl peroxide radicals. So, which are our hydrogen peroxide because it can easily give a free radical. So, that is what, what I do is the free radical initiator I will represent as R and R. That means the radical generator. So, the R is represents radical. Now, we have two types of breaking. So, if I break this bond that is benzyl peroxide if I take that is where I let me give an example the structure of that. So, it will be like this. This is called as benzyl peroxide. So, this R represents one part and another R represents another part of your benzyl radical. Now, when I give a, you because of the electronegativity difference between oxygen and oxygen is same thereby this will go for homolytic cleavage whenever a homolytic cleavage occurs the shared pair of electrons between the bond will be equally shared by there thereby you are going to get a singlet electron on each that is where we called as radical if it is go for heterolytic cleavage therein by you are going to get what we call as cation as well as anions but homolytic cleavage always gives us you a radicals these radicals are having a singlet unpaired electron they show i reactivity thereby where they find a double bond or what we call as a functional group they try to react and bring about polymerization process so let us explain that means remember the radical initiation takes place then that will start interacting with your monomer to form a second step called as propagation so that is where i am going to show by taking an example of ethylene the radical which i am going to talk about is gets formation upon eating as r dot plus r dot that is radical we get this radical if it interact with your monomer i am taking ethylene as monomer sorry ch2 double bond ch2 so now you can see here there is a lone pair of pz orbital of your carbon will be empty thereby this one of the radical will attack this monomer that is what i mentioned here or not so this will attack your one of the double bond thereby this molecule gets converted into r single bond ch2 okay h 
to this radical that means the electron which was there that will be promoted to the next carbon site this radical is that is called as the growing radical chain so this will react with one more monomer like this ch2 double bond ch2 which is a monomer of ethylene so this will attack to this carbon thereby this double bond will shift over then it is going to form a compound like this so there i am going to write as a r ch2 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 because this will be joining here thereby the electron gets over next then you get ch2 radical this is called as the propagation step now you look look at here every time the monomer is gets added because of initiation of this radical mechanism of this process so now this can go for n number of chains so that's where assume i will call it as n minus 1 because i want 1000 monomers to be joined so that means i am stopping at 999 because i want to terminate the process otherwise this process is not controlled means it will give unwanted product of different properties hence we have to terminate the process so thereby i am i want to stop the process how i am going to stop so we are going to use two methods that is called as bringing two radicals together that means the initiator if it is not free so they are going to form a covalent bond thereby it cannot initiate the step there is no initiation means there is no propagation so this is the one way bringing two radicals together to form a covalent bond thereby reaction stops or we can go for a reaction a radical with growing chain that is what I say here R plus uh, that is a CH2 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 dot. So now you can see here this is also having unpaired electron this is also having unpaired electron when I bring them together I am going to get a product R CH2 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 R. So thereby there is no free radical exist on this final product. So because of that the reaction stops. So this is what we call as the termination of the process. So I hope I think you understood what is the free radical mechanism of polymerization. So I think you all, all of you waiting for what we called as the contest winner. The previous contest uh, winner is Mansi. I congratulate Mansi. So you get one atom session to your account. So I think you all of you are waiting for the today's contest time. So let us look for today's contest question. It goes like this. The contest question goes like this. The which of the following monomer are unsuitable for condensation polymerization. So you have to be very careful. I will ask the question as which of the following monomers are unsuitable for condensation polymerization. So the options are given proponeic acid and ethanol, butadienic acid and glycol, diamines with the dicarboxylic acids, then hydroxy acids with the chloroplasts. I hope uh, all of you have gone through this, your countdown stats, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, I hope you are done. Okay. So, let us continue with the second type of radical uh, process that is called as cationic formation uh, process or anionic process of polymerization. So, this is the latest method. I think you might have wondered, so why we are required this? So, this is the one polymerization process uh, which you can find with, uh, I do not want to give any example with respect to company name. So, you might have seen measured the detergents. So, earlier detergent used to come in one color that is white color or off cream color which we call it as. Nowadays, you can find the measured the detergent comes with the orange bead as well as what we call as blue beads. So, that is where, so these detergent work in a better effective way by forming a micelles. So, this happens only by using this kind of mechanism of polymerization. Okay? So, there is a huge change that will work both in hard water as well as in soft water to make effective cleansing action of your dirt on the cloth. So, that is why one such polymerization process which I am going to talk about is the cationic addition polymerization process. So, as the cation itself talks about we are going to create an acidic medium. So, that proton is added to an what we called as a double bonded compound or any functional group which you look for. So, in this case I am taking a functional group you can take G as your group. If I take C L there automatically CH2 C double bond CH and C L becomes vinyl chloride. So, just let me present the structure. 
so CH2 double bond CHCl. So, this is called as the vinyl chloride when it undergoes polymerization which gives polyvinyl chloride that is a water supply pipes which you use polyvinyl chloride or instead of Cl if I make it as Cn this is called as PAN ok. There is not permanent account number this is called as polyacrylonitrile. So, this is one of the important material in obtaining the bulletproof jackets. So, this undergoes a polymerization to form a honeycomb structure and is have a high impact bulletproof jackets can be obtained with less weight. So, that is where we can obtain n number of such advanced material by using cationic as well as uh, anionic addition polymerization process. Now, your electron donating group which I am talking about are electron withdrawing group whichever you want you can take. First, the protonation takes place that is called as chain initiation by obtaining homolytic cleavage the H plus. Then that as you already so know that the charge is created that charge is going to attack to a double bonded compound once again. So, thereby you are going to get a growing chain radical this growing chain depends upon how many monomer units that is called as the degree of polymerization. Once the degree of polymerization is reached then we can terminate the process by doing earlier process of interacting a free radicals or a growing chain with a free radical thing. Next the last and the least but not the least what do you talk about anionic addition polymerase where you are talking about is look at here the amine group that is very very important that means it is having a lone pair of electron hence so this is called as anionic that means we are going to use certain uh, salts these salts once again when they go for uh, what we call as the binding site which are available on the monomer they can get into a covalent compound during that there is a transfer of electron takes place to the extreme end of the carbon atom. So, that will initiate the next monomer to join. Now, you can see here in the first place we got addition of this NH2 group and that charge with the negative carbenes especially you can find here the special type of carbons which are called as carbenes which have excess of charges which is generated on this carbon. So, that now enters to the polymer chain and makes the propagation step continues. Finally, you can see that then addition if I want to stop this because the negative charge that is carbon is there then I have to give a carbocation that means the positive charge. So, if I add with the, an acidic media that is what we call as the cation automatically the process gets terminated to get a desired polymer. So, I hope uh, you all of you understood what is the polymerization ok what are the classifications ok. So, and how actually this is obtained. Now, you can see look at here the chain termination step as I already said this process goes over here the proton gets added to these monomers and it makes a long chain macromolecular substance. So, in this case automatically they form hydrogen molecule. So, that prevents the further progression of your butyl rubber. So, that means what is the density is required, what is the property flexibility is required. Once we obtain that by using a viscosity measurement as well as a molecular weight measurement, so we can stop the process ok. So, I hope you under, all of you understood what we have talked about today's polymerization. Let us come to the end of this session. So, look at what we have discussed, we discussed about introduction to the polymers and we have discussed about the classification of polymers and we discussed about the basic mechanisms that is the free radical polymerization of all polymerization process which is in common and we discussed about ionic polymerization which is a special category where we want, want to obtain specialized properties for that polymer. So, that is by using cationic and as well as ionic anionic process. So, now with this so we will come to end of this uh, today's session. So, I think you all of you know that so, after this session you have a class practice session the 10 most important questions has been selected for your practice based on the today's topic content. So, I request all the passport users to get into that immediately and solve the things and I ask the non passport users to become a, become a passport members as early as possible. Thank you for joining with us.